Hello, my name is Janice B. Gordon. This is Scale Your Sales Podcast. Welcome to the Scale Your Sales Podcast, listed number nine of 42 best podcasts for every sales professional in 2021. I am Janice B. Gordon, the customer growth expert, recommended by LinkedIn as one of 15 innovative sales influencers to follow in 2021. In this episode, my guest, my honoured guest, is John Smybert. He talks about his book, The Wentworth Prospect. It is a real page turner. I'm reading it now. And uh, it talks about the methodology advance in a novel format, really as a novel. We go on to discuss how you sell is more important than what you sell. And John labors about this a great deal in the podcast discussion, giving lots of great examples. He has invested 38 years as a successful sales leader in four large IT corporations. Since 2004, he's assisted B2B selling organizations to transform the way they sell. He's passionate about enhancing professionalism in sales. He's co-authored the award-winning novel, The Wentworth Prospect, and the book is about a young person, salesperson, attempting to sell a software solution to a large corporation. Welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast. John, I've been wanting to get you on this podcast for such a long time. It's such a great honor. Why did it say, take so long, Janice? I would have loved to have come on your program years ago. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm here know. now, though, so let's celebrate. We're here now. Yes, this is going to be fantastic. I I was saying before we recorded how much I'm loving um, your, your book, The Wentworth Prospect. Now, I'm really interested. My good friend Tim Hughes describes the book as a sales methodology in the form of a novel. So why did you decide to bring the book to life in the format of a novel? Storytelling, uh, we all learn from stories, right? I read a sales book some time ago written by Tony Hughes, which was a novel, uh, The Joshua Principle. Yeah, I've uh, read that. And, uh, and yeah, I, I thought it was quite a good novel and a very good sales book. Um, and, and then when my friend Wayne Maloney approached me and said, we'd been, I've, I've got this methodology he'd been implementing in clients. He said, I want to write a book about this. Now, will you write it with me? And he'd already written two very good sales books, sales and sales management books. So I said, yes, Wayne, but I want to write a novel. I don't, I don't think he's ever forgiven me for saying those words. It's taken us six years to get you know, to where we are now, over six years. Um, but it was all about telling a story that people could relate to and understand and learn from. Uh, and, and, you know, stories really hit us in the heart. And, and it's important if we want to get a story across, get a message across, that we want to make people, have people embrace it and really love it. And so we set a novel. Um, it's a tough, tough gig, though. My challenge was to write a better novel than what Tony had written. I think we've done that. Tony, hope you're not listening. I think we've done that. Uh, you just said it before we came on, it is a page turner. Um, you know, people are getting killed in the second chapter and all that sort of stuff. So it's a novel, but it's a sales novel. It's a business novel. Uh, and we had a lot of fun getting it there. And we're getting some great feedback from people who are having a lot of fun reading it or listening to it. And yeah, I find it really interesting. You don't realize you're learning because you're listening to the story. And that's what I, I love about it. And it's like, hang on a moment, you've just dropped, you know, something there. And it's like, you almost need to do a double check and realize that you've learned something in the, yep. you know, the, the last paragraph that's, that's gone by. So it's lovely. And how often does that happen when you're reading a textbook? 
you're normally trying to get to the end of it. It's like counting or, or you're, the time. Or you're skipping through and trying to make notes and trying to get the essence of it, but it's, yeah, it's hard Or you've read work. pages and you think, I don't remember any of that. What did I, it's like driving, not being aware of, you know, the journey. Yeah, no. Or, or the way I read textbooks, I I, I look through you know, the early part of the book, I, I look at the agenda and then I go into each chapter and try and pick the eyes out of it. Uh, and it becomes a reference book. It's, if it's a good textbook, it's a reference book, and I'll go back to it in, in different parts of the chapters. Um, but I'll never read it from cover to cover. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas this one, you will. It's, you will. It'll, it'll... You definitely will. So were you familiar with the framework events before? Because you, you had wanted the novel and the story, and then you had the, the methodology. So how did those two things come together? Uh, I, I've, I've been working with the, the advanced methodology for many years. Okay. Um, it's been enhanced and changed and upgraded and so on. But it's, it's extremely effective. Our customers, I mean, uh, the, we'll get into this, but the essence of, of, of from, for me, for selling is, is about helping other people, uh, giving to them, creating value for them, uh, helping them uh, um, achieve an outcome. It's not about selling a product. Uh, and, and, and that's really the essence of, of what the methodology is and what the book is all about. It's, it's got nothing to do with selling a product. In fact, the book, for those that are interested, it's a young lady selling a cybersecurity solution to a bank. Well, yeah, I don't want to say that too loudly because anybody that got no interest or feels they'd be, uh, they wouldn't understand selling cybersecurity to a bank. None of the books about cybersecurity or banking well, to some extent, it's about banking because it's about how they, the, the young lady that's a heron sue um, is, is engaging with the bank and helping the bank through a thinking journey over you know, six months or so um, to have the bank, bank then eventually the lights come on and they say, right, we, we, you know, we've got some good value out of this. Um, I won't give you the give away the ending of the story, but it's it's a it's a really interesting journey, and you, you use the word journey, aligned to the buying journey that the that the the bank is going through when they've got a cybersecurity issue and they need to upgrade their cybersecurity system. It, it's it's all about helping the client. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Um, how? Uh, why is it that? Um, you sell more when you don't sell. You mentioned this just now. Why? How does that happen? Well, it all depends on your definition of the word sell, Janice. And to me, um, doing what I just talked about is selling. Talking about your product is not selling. Right? So I think it's selling, but it was... Um, Zig Ziglar, who said uh, something to the effect that the more people that you uh, help achieve their objectives, the more you'll achieve yourself. Uh, I think it was the other way around, but something along those lines. And, and I'm a great believer in that. I've seen it throughout my lifetime. You know, people say, has sales changed? Well, good selling really hasn't changed. Yes, we've got all sorts of technology now and the, and the, and the buyer's much more educated and they've got access to content and information. But if, if, any, if anything, that's confused the buyers even more. Um, so the, the opportunity for all salespeople is to help the buyer. Now, you need to be pretty good and have a, a number of good skills, but that's what selling's always been about. So talk to me uh, about how you relate value to the customer, because value, it's in the, the eye of the beholder, really, isn't it? So how um, does that work? And it's such an, a key aspect. So tell me more about that. Let me tell you about my value proposition, Mr. Customer. I, how, many, how many times have I heard those words, right? And, and, and yet, you know, we, we can't force value on the customer. We might have a perception about what we think their value, the value they would get from making a change in their organisation that we want to talk about would be. But the reality is, you're right, the, 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 the perception of value is in the, in, the, in the eyes of the customer, in the head of the customer. I've got a great friend who uh, says selling is a poker game. Why? 
because you need to have the customer put the chips on the table before you put the chips on the table. The customer has to express the value. If we try and tell the customer what we think the value for them is going to be, is it real? Is the customer going to believe it? But if we get the customer to tell us what the value is going to be for them around a change that we've been talking about, it's real, it's their perception. Now we can believe it, they believe it, we can work, go forward on that basis. Interesting, yeah. So what's your view to the extent that the customer's experience impacts sales? 100%. Um, you, you've said you've listened to a lot of the video interviews I've done and I do short five minute interviews on specific subjects. And one person I interview a lot is Kean McLaughlin, Kean C-I-A-N. Uh, We've interviewed brilliant. him on the podcast. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and Kean's Kean does uh, a lot of um, uh, win win loss reviews, uh, assessing where we went right or where we went wrong, subject to whether we won and lost the order. Uh, and, and he's come back time and time again. The customers tell him. It was the team they were working with that made them make the decision to go forward. It wasn't the product. The product is important and the price and everything else, but that's what gets you on the dance floor. It's then how you engage with the client and the experience you give to the client that wins you the business or loses it. Yeah, yeah. To what extent do you think that the pandemic has changed the modernization of sales. What are the key elements that you think has changed because of the, the pandemic that we're all going through? Well, obviously, pandemics change. I mean, what we're doing right now, I've been doing for a long time, but a lot of people haven't, uh, and they particularly in the sales world, they required face-to-face. -face. I think it has accelerated some use of technology. I think the pendulum will swing back again. Uh, because there's nothing better than I'd love to be sitting in, the, in a room with you, Janice, and, you know, shaking your hand and, and having, uh, the, the, you know, we'd engage more effectively, but we can engage very effectively this way. So the, 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 the pandemic has driven, accelerated the use of a whole host of technologies in sales. That said, as I said before, sales in its essence Good sales, in its essence, hasn't changed in decades. Um, and, and therefore, all the tools do is help, help us do it more effectively, more efficiently, um, get, help the customer realize the value more effectively, maybe, all sorts of different things it brings to the table. But the essence of selling hasn't changed. It's all about helping the customer go through a buying journey, help them achieve an outcome. It's not about you selling your product. I wonder if you think that technology and the masses of sales stack that we're having to deal with now, do you think that's taking away from the essence of what you say that, you know, selling and serving people hasn't really changed? Do you think it's, it's taken away or it's really adding more to that connection that we get through selling? Technology accelerates. And it either accelerates success or accelerate, accelerates failure. It depends on whether we have the right approach to selling. Uh, and then we apply technology to it. So it's like the, all the CRMs that have failed over the years, right? What's the failure rate on CRMs? That, depending on who you read, a 60% or 50% of CRM implementations have failed. They haven't failed because there's anything wrong with a CRM. Right? It's failed because it hasn't been implemented properly. It's failed because you, you know, more often than not, management tried to use the CRM to bring process and, 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 and methodology into the way people manage customer relationships and sell. But the CRM itself wasn't a problem. It was the, the fact that they had not, well, they, we're not doing things properly in the first place. And all you do is overlay technology on the top and you exacerbate the problem. Same with, with sales technology. Brilliant technology out there. If you know how to apply it and are selling effectively, it'll accelerate your sales. In fact, in this day and age, it's, it's vital we, we embrace technology because we'll be left behind. The competitors will leave us behind. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, a, 
a lot on listening in. And I know that you talk about actively listening and how important that a skill is. But you also have technology now that's listening in that is um, through AI identifying the key aspects that you need to be focusing on. So it's enabling what we're, we're doing. Um, but I have seen there's almost an over-reliance on technology to do the work that we need to um, be embedding in our own skill set. I don't know what your thoughts might be on that. No, I totally agree with you. Uh, AI is one one thing, and 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 I, I think there's lots of things happening in AI that are very very productive and good towards sales. But let's just go back to something simple that everybody knows: LinkedIn. Uh, so many people say, "Oh, LinkedIn doesn't help me sell." And I say, "Okay, let's look at how you're selling." And it's how they're selling that's a problem, not LinkedIn. Then other people, they, they just love using Sales Navigator. It really helps them become much more focused and productive and in helping their clients achieve the outcomes, right? Uh, and once they have that mindset, and it, it really is a, it's a company mindset, it's an individual mindset, that we're help, here to help our clients achieve an outcome, not to sell our product. That's something that happens through reciprocity. Then our behavior will be correct. We'll, we'll learn how to conduct the conversations in the right sort of way. Um, and if we deploy technology, it just makes it so much easier to do effectively. Yeah, yeah. So um, what practical strategy would you um enables buyers to buy what would you say is a real practical strategy i'm, I'm going to get back to tactics more than strategies i think mm -hmm. uh, one is you need a process that supports a buying journey all right that's if you like that's a strategy it's a tactic you need a process and a methodology that supports the buying journey, supports the buyer in making a decision, helps them get to where they want to go, including helping them get their mind around what the outcome might be uh, and helping them achieve that outcome. So you need to have tools and methodologies and tactics and strategies to, to help you do that. But you get back to the basics. That's primar primarily how we have a conversation with a client. Um, we, we, we discovery I talk about discovery a lot you, you said you're reading the book well you're about halfway through the book you probably just finished discovery right that's half of the half of a book half of a novel uh, and a lot of people think discovery if they do it at all or do it effectively at all it's just a little fast little thing we do at the beginning of the sales process uh, but discovery is a, a, a really important function that needs to be done properly and it's discovery in itself needs a process it needs multiple steps we perform and it needs skills particularly conversation skills and yes questioning skills but but it's the right sort of skills at the right time through the discovery process now it's two key phases to discovery and i'm and people really don't need to understand this to, to understand how the client thinks and help the client get there the first stage is really understanding with the client what the current situation is and so you your whole discovery is around that the problems the the, the and, and the implications of those problems on the business and so on nothing to do with where they want to go what outcome they're looking for at that stage it's understanding the current situation then the second stage of, of discovery is taking working with a customer to understand understand what the desired outcome would be the desired state once we've driven a change to address the problems and so on. And so that discovery is, is all about, again, asking questions, but now we're asking questions to help the customer think through where they'd like to go, take them on a thinking journey. Uh, and if we do that, we're disrupting their thinking. A lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't be using that word disrupt. The reality is any customer worth their salt wants their thinking disrupted. They want to think outside the box. They really want to understand how they can drive the outcomes they're looking for. So as a salesperson, we need the skills to go through those two phases of discovery. And I, I suppose it's it's finding that gap as well, 
So the discovery as to the current situation where they are now and really understanding that. So whatever solution that you might might um, advise has to be embedded in the, the tools, the skill sets that the organization has has now. It has to work <laughs> with what the culture and everything. And then the the discovery around the uh, the outcome, um, it, what what's going to work for the organization, where they want to go, why they want to go there, what's important to them, who are the key key people, all of that. There's going to be well, a gap between the two, isn't there? And that's where yeah. the, the salesperson comes in, is filling that gap. But And I often find that salespeople may do where we are now, but they don't quite understand where the organization wants to go and why, why the organization what not only once but maybe they have to go there then what are the drivers that are taking is it is it the, the shareholders is it some technology or is it their custom they don't often understand that the why what's, what's it going to look like and what's it going to look like when they get there yeah yeah and by the way by the way everything we've discussed has nothing to do with product Yes, our product has to be able to deliver whatever outcome we, we're talking to the customer about, but that outcome is the, a change in the way they do business, right? It, that's what it is. We might have a product that will help them achieve that change, but we don't introduce the product until everybody's in total agreement on what the new business framework is going to look for and, and how they're going to actually address the problems they've got. And now we bring the product in to, 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 to uh, show how they can actually achieve it. The, <laughs> I, I get very frustrated sometimes, particularly when a company doesn't support the right mindset of their salespeople and the behavior of the management tends to destroy that, uh, destroy behavior in the salespeople. The right mindset is we don't discuss our product at all through all, everything we've been talking about, including one we haven't talked about is understanding the value, uh, the, understanding the customer's perception of the value once we understand the outcome. So I so often will we'll go through this and we're going through a change program in a company and I'll go on a ride with a customer to see a, a salesperson, to see a customer um, and observe. And um, the customer will start, you know, lots of really good questions, that first stage of discovery and the customer starts. And, and the customer thinks, yes, we do have that problem. Our problem is really this and we're really struggling with this. The salesperson sits back. Let me tell you how our product addresses that. And, and we still haven't got to what the new environment's going to look like, how they're going to achieve the outcome. And that's not a product. Now, I don't know how to express this more clearly to people other than go and read the book. You'll understand. Yes. Sue didn't discuss a product She's selling cybersecurity solutions. She didn't discuss the product uh, at all. And, and you're what, well over halfway through the book. She hasn't discussed product at all, has she, with the client? No, right? no. That's where you've got to get to. You are a consultant helping the client through a journey towards addressing problems and issues they've got uh, and helping them get to an outcome that they desire. And, and you can change the thinking about that out, uh, outcome. That's really good sales. That's where we're, we're challenging the customer's thinking, where... We're disrupting their thinking. We're bringing them to a new vision, if you like. That's what selling is. Once you've got them there, the rest is easy. We have a product that will deliver that now. How This is a real mindset shift. How do you, in the work that you do with um, sellers, with sales professionals, how do you get them to understand that there is a massive shift in mindset in, and that feeds through to their behaviors how do you talk to a salesperson about that well it, it's an organizational change program Salespeople can go through the change and, and one of the biggest frustrations i've got is i've, I've seen really good salespeople are working effectively in an organization that has the right approach to selling decide that i'll leave and take up another job is just going to give them more money or whatever they walk into another job where it's all about product sales and they fail Mm -hmm. right uh the, the real opportunity to get a company to change but yeah all those salespeople out there you can change 
but you probably have to bring your management along with you. If your management are very oriented on a product sale and everything associated with product oriented selling, and there's a manager in the book that does that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ropa. So, uh, so the book does teach, man teach management as well as how to sell. But the, I, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely critical that an organisation needs to look at how they do it. How do they do it, which is your question? It's a change programme. Mm -hmm. It's not a training program. Yeah. Yes, you know, we probably get most of our revenue through the training side of what we do, but I, I refuse to do training unless the company is absolutely committed to a change and they're willing to be taken through a change program. And that's in, that means it's, it's an eight or 12 month program. It's not a, a, a one week or two week training program or whatever the case is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And change is, is difficult. It, it's, it really is changing our behavior uh, and that's not something on the surface it's deep down we've got to really practice it uh, and you know role players and practice I'm, I'm, a, I'm a keen golfer you know my handicap's been sitting at 15 for 20 years <laughs> and and um, I, I, I keep saying to myself I've got to get my handicap down to single figures I've really got to do that the way to do it is for me to stop playing golf in competitions and go and practice because playing in competitions is not is not practice. Your mind's not in a practice mode. It's in, hey, I want to do the best in this competition, and and so you, you you keep repeating all the bad things you do. Sales is exactly the same, and everybody thinks I'll practice on the client. Well, you've got to be really careful about that. Not because you might fail, failure you can learn from. It's because you just keep repeating the, the bad behavior all the time without stepping back and looking at it and getting other people to critique it and so on. So role plays and co the right sort of coaching for management. Uh, and, and then we, have, we implement a program where every three weeks, a, a team sit together and, 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 and talk about how they're implementing the changes in their behavior with a whole framework they follow. It's so important that it's a change program and not a training program. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point and great analogy. So, John. Yes, Janice. Who is your hero or shero? Uh, my hero's male. Um, I've had a few heroes. I, I, there's two, two heroes and they're both in the sales world. Um, I, had, um, I had started in one sales job and done okay, um, but then taken sabbatical and gone on 12 months uh, travel and came back and got a job with another company uh, and I got in there and, and the sales manager was you know, spending some time with me and as time went by he, he sort of observed something you don't believe in yourself enough John let me tell you I believe in you and I went wow okay and, and John, you just need to believe in yourself and you'll be really successful. Anyway, he demonstrated that he believed in me for the next few months and I just took off. That was where my career really took off. That was one. Um, I had another, another guy that believed with me and made, moved me into sales management fairly early in my career. Uh, and that was uh, a, a good move. But, but then I had a, um, a mentor that was a very senior executive in a corporation who somehow picked me up about five six levels down from here he was based in the us and i'm based in australia uh, and he just kept picking up the phone every three months how are you doing uh, don't get too comfortable in that job will you <laughs> why just don't get too comfortable um, and then every now and again call me and say look you've you've got to the next hurdle i want you to take on another challenge uh, and he would mentor me through all of that and he he took me through some real changes i i was Back in the 80s, I was an absolute expert, and we should talk about domain expertise because I'm an absolute believer a salesperson needs to be an expert in some aspect of their customer's domain. Uh, I was a domain expert in manufacturing. Uh, I could talk manufacturing to the cows come home, closed loop manufacturing just in time, and, and I was selling a manufacturing solution, but you know I wouldn't talk about that. I'd talk about yeah, the, the challenges the customer had, get an understanding of that, take them through a sort of thinking journey to a new way of thinking and so on. Ended up really successful in that role. And then um, went into sales management, still managing a team of manufacturing salespeople, selling manufacturing solutions. 
Um, and then um, this mentor picked up the phone one day and called me and said, I want you, I want you to move from Australia to New Zealand. I want you to jump on a plane and go over there and manage the banking and finance operation. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> that stage I had, you know, you know, the old Coopers and Library and one of the big four consulting firms trying to poach me out to be a, a manufacturing consultant. So I'm a manufacturing expert. I said, no, you're a, you're a career guy in, in IT, but a career guy in IT uh, leadership and, and so on. I want you to face your next challenge. Now, I learned a lot out of that, and every salesperson needs to. I became a domain expert in banking and finance very quickly. I just spoke to the right people. I read the right books. I went to the right seminars. I spoke to the right customers. And very quickly, I was able to talk banking and finance language. Uh, and, and, and as soon as you can talk the language of your customer, mm -hmm. not the language of your product or your company, but the language of your customer, you, you now have the ability to be a really good salesperson. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's that's a great way to end this podcast. So, so John, um, tell us how listeners can get hold of you. Oh, if anybody wants to get hold of me, uh, LinkedIn's probably the best. Um, just if you if you connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a very personalised message. Say I saw you on Janice's show, and I really want to connect, and this is the reason why, and so on. Uh, because I just say no, no, no to most people that are, try and connect. So, but if you do that, I'll connect uh, and be delighted to, to connect with you. Excellent. Well, it's been an absolute honor and uh, pleasure having you on Scale Your Sales podcast. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your insights and expertise, John. And every, everybody go out and read this book, yes. The Wentworth Prospect. Everything I talk about is in a novel uh, and that's the best way to learn it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Scale Your Sales podcast. If you like this discussion, feel free to listen to other episodes or watch the caption show on YouTube and subscribe to future episodes. I would really appreciate it if you would leave a positive review on iTunes. Thank you.